Hello, welcome to my channel. Today, we're not gonna talk about airbags or any of that stuff, although I will get to that <laughs> with some more riding here soon. We're gonna talk about this, which has nothing to do with bicycles. This is my new Chevrolet Bolt EUV. So this is a slightly bigger one than the regular Bolt EV. So it's pretty cool. It's charging right now. Like just get a kind of a cool look at it from the outside. Cool. I like the color. It's <laughs> a little darker gray or silver, I guess is the color. It's a much darker silver than my truck is <laughs> it's funny on this car on this car the blue really stands out because everything else is black or or the silver color awesome so i'm gonna jump inside and show you some of the stuff inside Okay, I am inside. I turned the air on. It is still plugged in, which is kind of cool because I can run the car in the air and still be charging it. Um, I am not a car review person. I don't do car reviews. That's not what I'm all about. But I did just buy this car and my channel is called Shad Life, which is a generic name. So I'm going to talk about my car. Um, whether you want to watch this video or not, it's up to you. But I know people that are interested in especially electric vehicles because they're relatively new. I mean, yes, Tesla has been around for a long time. The Nissan Leaf's been around for a long time. But now they're really starting to come on the scene with a lot of other brands getting on the bandwagon. Um, so let's talk about this Bolt EUV a little bit. Um, just because this is... Uh, the Bolt EUV Premier Launch Edition. So this particular car, I don't call this an SUV because it's definitely not an SUV. It's a hatchback. Let's just get right out there and say it. This is a hatchback, right? All right. Call me old, whatever you want to call me. This is a hatchback. All right. It's not even a crossover. It's front wheel drive. Doesn't have all wheel drive. It's a hatchback. So anyway. <laughs> now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about just how many features this car has, like, as this Premier Launch Edition. So, um, it's got heated seats, which is really common in cars now, but it's actually got cool seats. So, the red, if I wanted to go heat, would be that direction, right? But, of course, I don't want to do that. If I wanted to cool the seats, I can go down and I get the blue indicator. And so I have cooled seats. I've never had a car with cooled seats before. And it's kind of crazy because if you look at the seats, there's like kind of this perforated um, surface. And these are like leather or whatever. I don't know if they're real leather, but um, I can feel air on my back kind of blowing through those which is kind of cool um depending on where, where i'm going what i'm doing i like to maximize my range so i probably won't use a lot of this stuff unless i absolutely have to today it is pretty hot out so i will either have the windows wide open or i would run the air conditioner and just take the range hit um i will do another video on range and what different things affect the range but this is just going to be about the car for right now. Um, so we come over here and this is, I've had Chevrolets with the My Link, I think they call this. Um, and this is completely updated. Pretty cool. This is the home screen. Um, if I want to see static status of the cars, it, the phone I'm holding in my hand <laughs> to film with, I don't have to have the phone plugged in, which is super cool. And let's not play relaxation music right now. Um, 
but this has my Android Auto automatically synced without me having to plug a cable into my phone. My Tacoma, I have Android Auto, but I have to plug a cable into it, so it's kind of nice to not have to do that. So I really like that feature. Um, and then of course this is going to have all the same Android Auto stuff and that's where I'm going to do my navigation even though I get free navigation for quite a while through uh, Chevrolet I'm going to just probably use my Android Auto because it's what I always use. Um, and then there's all these other things and I'm going to get into it that's their nav. If I wanted to see the energy um, stuff on the car I can see certain things i don't i haven't looked at all of this yet but it can tell me um just the statistics of my charging and things like that so here's a good one like right now i have these climate things on so it's going to show me what's how much power percentage wise that's going to use so that's quite a bit the way i have it set um so on and so forth uh impacts look at you can see that stuff super cool uh history I, this car has hardly any history so not much there but the flow will tell you whether you're regen or using the battery so on and so forth you also get that information on the dashboard like where you see the circle it'll turn green when you're driving and you're being pretty efficient but if you like hammer on the gas or you're going 65 70 miles per hour it'll start to kind of go from green to yellow and when it's yellow, that means it's using more energy consumption than what you really would want, ideally. So you just have to be careful with that. You can see that with, with the things I have running right now, it's um, 4 kilowatts. Um, so pretty cool. Um, this has what's called Super Cruise, and I'm going to have to test it. I have yet to even use it. But apparently this bar will alert me if it needs my attention. If you can see that, it's kind of like this little lighted part of the steering wheel. There's an indicator that's probably watching me while I'm doing Super Cruise. So Super Cruise is like hands-free driving. The car will automatically navigate itself, similar to what Tesla calls autopilot. So pretty typical controls and stuff on the steering wheel. Um, it's got the paddles back here, um, but it's got this little lever. Now this lever, it used to just be like a paddle up behind the steering wheel, but now they're giving me these other controls, which I think are just going to, yeah, I actually don't know. They'll, it probably changes something that I'm not sure, but then over here is like radio volume. And then this lever will do more aggressive braking when I let off the gas. So this is the one pedal driving thing, and now the car is making some noise. So one pedal driving is this option right here. Oh, I know what it's doing. It's playing my audio right now, which is my nice calming music I use to go to sleep with. So these controls that I was messing with over here must control the mode of the radio and stuff like that obviously because that turned on so here is regen this is when you let this is one pedal driving so i can let off the accelerator i almost said gas <laughs> let off the accelerator and the car slows down and it'll come to a complete stop if i need more aggressive regen i use this and it'll even more aggressively come to a stop and obviously there is a brake pedal and disc brakes on the car so if i absolutely need to stop i stop <laughs> like just like a normal car um but for the most part i honestly i mean i i honestly think i have yet to use the brake on this car since i've driven it from the dealership granted i've only driven it home <laughs> but i haven't had to use the brake <laughs> so that's cool um, all down here, all kinds of normal climate control things. Here's another kind of wild feature. What you're looking at there is a camera. So here, I'll flip this. This is actual looking out the rear. See how you can't see much? You can see a little bit between the seats. The rear window is pretty small. But if you go like this, I can see all the way out the back. So 
um, all kinds of cameras here. Because I have the car plugged in, it won't let me put it in reverse right now. But if I put it in reverse, it'll show me the backup view, but it'll also show me an aerial view looking down on the car. Um, someday I'll actually do like a driving review and show you all that stuff, right? Um, here's the lane keeping assist button now that I see it. And I want to turn that off because on my way home, that was on and it's kind of annoying. I, if I'm on a two lane road or something, I'll probably turn that on. My Tacoma actually has this also, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, lane keeping assist will, if you start to drift out of the lane, the car will steer back into the lane. Really weird. <laughs> Traction control. Here is the sport button. I actually tried that. Um, if you don't know anything about electric cars, <laughs> um, at least like this one and other ones, they're quick. Like, I mean, this one isn't as fast as like the Teslas and all the other ones. Like even the Rivian is ridiculously fast. Um, but for a little hatchback car, it's pretty fast. <laughs> I want to say it does 0 to 60 in 6.8 seconds or something like that. At least that's what I think car and driver tested it as. I tend to trust their numbers because they're really, they've been testing cars forever and they go out and do tests on them and they go both directions into the wind with the wind. They have pretty thorough testing and I believe they say 6.8 seconds which isn't fast. It's not like sports car fast or muscle car fast but for a little car like this it's fast and what's really cool about it is it's instantaneous there's no mechanical anything going on when you push on the accelerator the car just goes and I'll show examples of that um, in a driving video here shortly so anyway back to this mirror and it's got all these settings I can zoom it in zoom it out do all this stuff kind of neat um, you know I, me being an older person that's been driving cars for, she's what, 30-some uh, years, 35, 36 years, something like that. Um, it, this kind of technology always throws me off. Um, but sometimes I just embrace the technology and force myself to get used to it because I like to kind of do that, right? Um up top i'm kind of just like i said i'm not a car review person so i don't have a methodical order but this car has the full much bigger uh i'm gonna call this a sunroof i hear moonroof i hear other things i call it a sunroof and yes the sun is bright out there but you can open that and then i can open this in this mode and you're probably looking right into the sun right now, which is kind of silly. Or I think, yep. So this has that mode where you can, if I push it forward, let's see how I do it. Oh, that's going all the way out. There it goes. I guess I don't know how to make it just do that. I'll figure this stuff out as I'm messing around with this car for the first time, aside from what the salesperson came through and told me. Um, so there you have it. So that's pretty cool. I haven't had a sunroof in a car in a long time. And it actually has this little wind thing that pops up, which I remember having a Volkswagen GTI and it had a very similar thing. And it's kind of nice because it reduces the wind noise. So it's kind of, you know, they thought of a lot of things uh, that you just don't normally get in cars. Um, all right, so I am going to step out of the car. Weird. <laughs> I do not know how that's supposed to work. <laughs> Funny. Anyway, <laughs> I will figure it out. So I am going to step out of the car and show you the back and the amount of space I have and things like that, because I am a cyclist um, and I want to be able to put my bike in here. I do plan on getting a hitch so I can put the bike rack on the back. Uh, that hasn't been installed yet. So let's go out and look at the back. I'm going to insert this before we go look at the back because I just figured out the sunroof. <laughs> this is funny because uh, I used to play video games all the time and I was always like 
one of my issues with, especially as video games started getting into more touch sensitive buttons rather than just on off buttons. Uh, I remember I had a PlayStation 2 and you could like kind of gently push a button or push it hard or whatever and kind of get variable sensitivity. I'm the same way with cars. So what happens is these buttons, they actually have two levels. So if I just push one little indent in, it only cracks it and then I can close it, right? But if I push two indents, so it's like one, two, now it opens the whole thing. <laughs> oh, funny. And if I close it, I push it full indentation, closing it. So if I want to open, one indent, close, one indent. And if I want to fully open it, I push it all the way. So that's kind of funny. Um, I want to do this because the sun, even with tinted windows, the sun is kind of brutal. Okay, now let's go look at the back. All right, here's the back seat. And they also have kind of this ventilation in them. Um, I don't know where you control the back seats, but apparently these also have at least heating. I don't know if they have cooling, but they look like they do. That'd be pretty wild if you could also cool the back seats. I will probably rarely ever have passengers in the back of this car, but if I ever do, I can make them comfortable. It looks like there's uh, at least some USB uh, type C and normal, I forget what you call the old school one, but they're there. So pretty cool. Um, now let's look at the back from here. So this is how much um, space is when the seats are. Okay, I folded the seats down so you can get a general idea of how much space is back there. I could probably put my BMX bike back here without taking the wheel off. Uh, mountain bike, I would absolutely have to take the front wheel off, but that's usually a piece of cake. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool that I could at least get one bike and my gear and all that in here. Um, I like having my bike inside the car, aerodynamics, gonna get better range, and you know, it's uh, locked in the vehicle, so harder to steal, <laughs> but not impossible. So there you go. I'm gonna go back in the car where it's nice and cool. It's hot out. My phone is giving me a warning that it's, it's getting too hot. Okay, I'm back inside the car. It is hot outside. I don't know what's going on. It's been so hot this summer. Um, here in Minnesota, I'm just not used to it. Um, here is the screen. I realize you can scroll. There's all these other things. It comes with this Wi-Fi hotspot, my Chevrolet Alexa. I don't even have Alexa, so I probably will never use it. Sirius XM. Oh, and Joe Rogan is right there. Who uses that anymore? Um, so there you go. All the different screens you can just swipe. It's pretty responsive too. I feel like it's even more responsive than like my phone or some other devices I have. Um, and then um, one other thing that comes with this fully decked out one is Bose. Uh, I haven't tested that out yet either at least not i mean aside from like <laughs> this default uh sleep yoga that i play sometimes um which comes on automatically when i start the car i haven't <laughs> actually played the bows um i like the beastie boys i'm curious to know how the beastie boys sound through my bows system mainly the bass <laughs> so yeah there you have it i will do a driving review and remember I do not do car reviews, so I'm just winging this as best as I can. A um, couple of things that I probably forgot to mention, max range in this one is 250 miles. It's charging right now. It's a little over um, half charge. Um, so it's got 150 miles of range that it says right now, but max 177. This, this improves based on how I drive it. I know that from the other bolt um which is just now parked behind me maybe <laughs> it's kind of funny 
So I'll also do a comparison between the Bolt, if that's a 2020 model, so the Bolt EV and this Bolt EV, which is a 2022 model. And I can compare the two. That's an LT trim and this is a Premier trim. Again, launch edition, so it comes with the Super Cruise and all that stuff. Um, that one's pretty basic, but even for a pretty basic car, it's still got a lot of bells and whistles that are pretty cool. So, and it was that car that made me decide to get this car. Um, someday I'll tell you my story about Tesla a little bit, but for now, I'm going to end this video. Um, again, not bikes, but still stuff that's in my life. <laughs> I think I talked about my Tacoma a little bit when I bought it. So, um, I'm just FYI, I'm keeping the Tacoma because I still need it for certain things. This can't tow my RV trailer. I just got a new trailer for my airbag, which is parked, sitting, not parked, but sitting right over there. A uh, smaller trailer so I can put my airbag, my MTB hopper air ramp in there and all that stuff. Um, and this might be able to tow that trailer because it's a pretty small trailer with, with under 2,000 pounds of weight. This car isn't designed to tow, so, and even that small trailer will really cut the range. Um, towing is one of those issues that needs to be solved, especially with these EV trucks coming out. They do not get great range when you're towing. They certainly can tow a lot of capacity, but not great range. So I will talk about all of that. And another thing I'm gonna introduce you to, because I'm gonna do a much more thorough review of this car and talk a little bit more about technology and stuff, but not on this channel. I have another channel that I call Geeking Out With Shad. I did some programming stuff not too long ago on that channel. Um, and I haven't done much else with it, but I'm going to start doing more with that and review the technology stuff that I'm involved with. Some of the software engineering stuff, car, things like that. Anyway, I appreciate your support from my channel. Please like and subscribe. Peace.